Hi everyone. Today I will show you how to import custom geometries from GDS2 formats into ANSYS Lumerical software. This import method works for all Lumerical tools, and the scripts shown in this demo are also included as a zip with the comments to help you easily integrate into your own simulations. First, I will show you the standard method for importing using the GUI interface. Start by pressing the import button at the top of the toolbar. An import menu will open up for you to select the GDS file you wish to import. Next, the parameter menu will pop up with three parameters to specify. For cell name, please select the layout cell that includes the geometry you want to import. For layer number, please select the layer in which your geometry is drawn on. And finally, for materials, select the material that will be used for this geometry. In this example, I will be importing a standard Y-branch splitter designed for the SOI platform. Hence, I will select silicon as my material. Once complete, your custom geometry should be successfully imported. However, as you may already realize, the GDS layout does not import three-dimensional information. Because of this, the numerical tools will randomly assign a value to the Z-axis. To accurately represent your design, please make sure to correct the Z-span value. To do this, select the Importer Structure, right-click and select Edit, then correct the Z-span value to your desired value. In this example, our Y-branch is designed for a height of 220 nanometers, and we will input this value into our Z-span parameter. To properly simulate this SOI Y-branch, we will also need to add a cladding oxide layer. For complex geometries, you can use the same method we just did to input the structure. For this Y branch, however, the cladding just needs to enclose the structure. So we will instead use a simple box that can be created within Lumerical. To do this, select Structures at the top and choose Rectangle. Then right-click the structure that was added and select Edit. Next, change the dimensions of the box so that it fully encloses your device. A good rule of thumb is to add at least 0.5 microns of distance away from the device. This makes sure that the device is properly encased and still leaves enough room to insert simulation regions, sources, or monitors. Finally, select the correct material. For this cladding, we will choose SiO2. Also, for better visuals, you can set the alpha of the structure to 0.3, creating a translucent box. This concludes the first method of importing. For the next method, I will demonstrate how to perform imports using the Miracle scripts. The second method is beneficial to workflows that will constantly adjust to complex geometry, such as parameter sweeps. The Miracle scripts can be integrated into Python environments via the LUM API library provided with the software. For more information on setting up the LUM API library, please visit the ANSYS the Miracle website. On the right-hand side is a script editor. The Miracle scripts are intuitive to write as they nearly replicate the interface button presses users will go through. In this example, we will recreate the manual import we just performed through the GUI. We first start with line seven, where we declare the name of the GDS to import. As the file is within the working directory of this simulation file, I do not need to specify additional paths to the file. For lines nine to 11, we declare selections to provide for the import. E.g., our device is located in the cell named top, the geometry is drawn on layer 1-0, and we wish for the input structure to use the silicon material. Please note that all these variables that relate to the GUI interface are case-sensitive. For line 12, we specify our Z-span value in meters. Finally, on line 15, we have our actual import command. We also then use the set function to name the structure we just imported. To run the script, click this file icon with a green triangle. This button is located near the top of the script editor panel. Once executed, we can see that, as expected, our geometry was successfully imported. As mentioned before, this script can be further extended into part of a scripted design flow via Python or MATLAB.
Next, we will showcase the third method of importing geometries using a newer addition to the numerical tool set, the Layer Builder. The Layer Builder is suitable for imports in which multiple layers of GDS are needed to recreate a device. The Layer Builder is unique as it allows for an additional process file to be provided. The process file is a file provided by the foundry in which they give you the layer stack information of their fabrication process, such as the material and the thickness. Combined with the GDS, the Layer Builder can then automatically generate the device. The button for the Layer Builder can be found at the top of the toolbar, labeled as Build. Once clicked, a new Layer Builder object will be added to the objects tree. Right-click and select Edit on this object to pull up the Layer Builder properties. Next, click the button in the top left labeled as Import GDS File, then select your GDS. Just as we had done before, select the cell of interest afterwards. Now, in the bottom right half of the window, under the Layer section, click Add. This will create a new layer stack. You can now input the desired name, the layer number, the thickness, the pattern material, and the background material. Click OK and the Layer Builder will generate your design. This method is especially useful if there are different designs in the same file and you wish to simulate each one. It can also be used for post-fabrication analysis to investigate device variations. Just like the other methods before, the Layer Builder can be scripted. The script is straightforward. Line 7 creates a Layer Builder object and we rename it. Line 9 and 10 will load in a process file and a GDS file respectively. Lines 13 through 17 will set up the background geometry. In our example, this would be the cladding layer. Upon execution, we see our Y branch is set up as expected. The layer information you have inserted can also be exported as a process file. To do this, right-click and edit the Layer Builder object, then select Export Process File in the bottom right. The materials used can also be exported within the process file, allowing you to include custom material information. Lastly, I will show you a method which utilizes scripting and the Layer Builder to generate your geometry. This method assumes you only have a GDS file, but the Foundry did not provide a process file to import. This file is meant to be a semi-automated initialization script that would generate the process file after being set up. For lines 8 to 10, we create the Layer Builder object as we had before. Next, line 16 allows the retrieval of the layer list from the imported GDS file on line 10. This object, X, can be iterated as a for loop to set up each layer of the GDS with the necessary information. Here, we have two layers of interest from our GDS file. Layer 1 is a silicon layer, shown from line 18 to 23, which we have set up with a thickness of 500 microns and the silicon material. Layer 4 is the glass layer, shown from line 25 to 29, which we have also selected a thickness of 500 microns and the glass material. Upon running the script, we see that our Y branch is imported correctly. It is also possible to export the process file through script. This is particularly useful if the design flow wishes to operate without the GUI.
This concludes our tips and tricks video on importing geometries. Thanks for watching.